Okay, this is a bit of a follow-up to the last uh, beer keg furnace video. In the EL40 collet chuck, which is probably the first time you've seen the EL40 collet chuck, is the small slug of aluminium that I managed to get out of the red ball cans I melted down. So we're going to have a go and see how well this this machines. Um, uh, I, I don't know. I've, I've got no idea how it's going to go. We'll go. We'll face it off first and get rid of the. The, the, these little bits around the edges and, and we'll give it a go and see what it's like. Now, um, the lathe is set to run at the moment at 1000 RPM. This is one inch in diameter. So for aluminium, that's optimum speed for cutting. So let's give it a go and see what happens. Oh, safety glasses first. Yeah, always a good idea. It seems to be machining okay. Let's have a look at it, see what we've got. Yeah, it seems to be machining very well. We're not we're not f flush yet. We still got some a uh, little bit to do here, but let's uh, let's keep going. Going a little bit more, I think. about there now. Let's see if we knock those edges off. There we go. Right, let's see what we've got. Well, that is very, very nice indeed. That is that is machined up lovely. Let's uh, close in on that so you can have a look. Absolutely beautiful. I think tool, tool's not quite at the right height. We've got a little tiny pip in the middle there, which is um, not good. But yeah, the finish on that is perfect. So, so that's the aluminium, that's the Red Bull cans. So obviously you can get a good aluminium out of the Red Bull cans or other aluminium drink ca drinks cans, but you need a hell of a lot of them because there was a hell of a lot of dross and stuff on the flat, on the top of the melt when I did this. So, um, and yeah, this is this little tiny bit, this is like eight cans worth, but obviously you there's a lot of wastage, you know, but the aluminium itself, no, that's, that's pretty good. All right, let's take that out and put the checker plate aluminium bar in and see how that does. Okay, this is the uh, this is the checker plate aluminium. That's, if I can 
got a bit of it kicking around here somewhere. Now that's this, that's this stuff that was melted down to produce that bar. Um, I put the smooth end into the collet so that it's, it's gonna hopefully run concentric and we've got the rough end of the bar stuck out here. But um, right, no, let's give it a go. Seems to be machining okay. That's, that's very nice, very nice indeed. Right. Yeah, there's nothing at all wrong with that. That's that's machined up very well indeed. That's a that's a very nice surface. All right, let's skim along the outside edge and see what happens. Yeah, again, that is machining perfectly. And uh, I do appreciate that I haven't got the tool at the right angle, but it's cutting fine, so I'm gonna leave it alone. Right, one more skim, I think. Bigger cut. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Let's come up a little bit so you can see that. There you go. Yeah, that finish, absolutely perfect. Okay, here are the results from the machining of the home cast aluminium. This was the first, my first attempt, which turned out quite nicely, and that was made from little bits of scrap 
aluminium angle, uh, which I melted down. Second attempt was the red ball cans, which is only produced this very small lump, but it's still machined up fine. There's nothing wrong with the actual aluminium. You just need a hell of a lot of cans. And the third attempt so far was this piece here, which was uh, made from this uh, checker plate aluminium scrap, which I got two kilos off of eBay for six pounds, which I thought was pretty good. Now, uh, I was chatting to my friend Rob, uh, whose channel Zenido you all are aware of by now, if you watch my channel, and he was telling me about a Danish guy called Keld Sorensen, and I do apologize if I've mispronounced your name, but he does his own home cast aluminium, and he's got some quite good videos on it, and he's uh, produced quite a lot of um, aluminium from beer cans, but, he freely admits you need a hell of a lot of beer cans to produce any, any serious amount of aluminium. But he has also identified for me another source of good quality aluminium that I never even considered. And, and, he's, and it's just brilliant. Basically, this should be free. So where is this coming from then? Well, it's these things. Yeah, hard drives. Now, there must be millions of hard drives in the world. <laughs> and uh, there must be many, many, many thousands that are completely US. I know I've got a few old ones kicking around that are, that are US. And once you strip them down, take the guts out, which is very easy to do. The chassis, this part, the black bit, is quite, there's quite a large amount of aluminium there. I've already done one. I haven't melted it down yet, but you know, that's the that's the chassis from a hard drive that I've stripped and then chopped up using the bandsaw. Bandsaw goes through it like butter, so it's no problem. So I'm going to try that next and see what kind of aluminium that you, you get out of it. I'm not sure what this black coating is. It might be anodizing. It might be paint for all I know. I, I, I don't know, but we'll, we'll, I'm sure that will just burn off whatever it is. So that's going to be next. Uh, next up for the beer keg furnace. But uh, so far, I have to say that the the whole thing's been quite a success and um, my thanks again go out to Rob who was the inspiration for this for me doing this and it, and he's he's dead right you know you don't need to spend an awful lot of money uh, you can do this relatively cheaply and you can produce perfectly usable aluminium for model making like model steam engines stern engines that kind of thing so yeah yeah it's it, it's so far turned out really well right that's the end of this one I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. Cheers.